morning everybody, I'm back in my usual car for the day and I'm recording it almost at the same time as I did yesterday's video However, it is a little bit bright, although there's more clouds, I don't quite get it I still could turn on the light here, let's see Yeah, but I, I don't like this halo coming from the top, so I keep it like that and I hope you'll enjoy seeing me This car is a little bit bright because the, the bigger windows, but it's also a lot smaller Anyway, um, I thought I may not make a video this morning uh, because there was only really one game yesterday, which was Southampton at home to West Ham. And the story of that one is actually quickly told. I mean, the game has some interest to me, oddly enough, since West Ham um, is now the team of the best Austrian player, Arnautovic, although he is injured. And Southampton has an Austrian coach, first Premier League coach from Austria. So, uh, you know, call it an Austrian derby, although it's minimal contribution there. But, you know, it, it locally here, it, it actually gets um, quite some attention. And, yeah, game in the second half, I think around the 50th, Southampton gets a rather strange uh, first goal, I think. It, everything looked saved or whatever, but uh, it was still calamitous and then the ball gets in about a few bounces. Uh, so Southampton gets the lead and it seems like they are on the way to a third win in a row. But no, nope, West Ham, Felipe Anderson with a wonderful strike. About three minutes later, uh, makes the game level again, and then shortly thereafter, uh, scores even the winner. And so, West Ham, uh, I think now at halftime, West Ham is even in the upper half of the table. Thanks to that, when Southampton is in a little bit of trouble, but you know, maybe things are on the up for them too. Uh, and the year closes out with. Uh, funnily enough, in a way, but I think this, uh, they have to do it because now there's the FA Cup and all those kind of things where we didn't see much. Um, we'll, uh, we'll end the year with the first round of uh, the second half of the season in England, uh, while in Italy we finish up with the first half of the season. So yeah, those are pretty, 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 pretty much in line. And when I said yesterday that Liverpool has more points than Juve, yeah, this is only thanks to uh, them having played one more game. So that was basically Premier League, and I would have ended the video probably here, but um, the fallout yesterday after Inter Napoli, I really only saw the highlights, and I already read when I got to work. Um, that there was a little bit more to it. Um, the sending off of Koulibaly, yes, the clapping here, um, it's not quite clear whether it was towards the referee, uh, it looked like it, or it was towards the crowd. Why the crowd? Because there were monkey jams uh, mocking Koulibaly as a black player, and you know, the north south rivalry in Italy is huge and this makes Napoli kind of every trip north for Na Napoli is uh, if you want because most of Serie A is played in the north and I think this year it's especially pronounced I think that Frosinone, Napoli and Cagliari are the only three teams south of Rome and Rome in many ways is already considered a southern city I think you probably can't even all the divide already, some of it is Florence, but it's typically called uh, around Rome, um, the north south divide. Um, the Polentoni and the Tiroli, the Polenta eaters from the north, the rich guys, and the earth eaters from the south, the poor guys. So, yeah, there's always abuse hurled at uh, the Napoli players, the Napoli fans and uh, especially black players. Now, uh, this doesn't mean that Napoli fans and so on are saints and so on, because uh, it goes the exact other way as soon as these teams all make it south to Naples. It is just an ugly rivalry 
um, that exists in Italy and I think they are a, I would say a lot of work needs to be done is uh, understanding it. This has always been intrinsically there in a way, uh, especially since not Italians and you know I'm not Italian I just read a lot about Italian soccer and about Italy itself I'm fascinated by the country uh, with its history, its beauty but there's also quite an ugly side to it and I think that even makes it more fascinating to me and that's also why Serie A is so fascinating because there are those ugly things uh, attached to it that you know endless plot lines and uh, twists and turns, bribes um, Accusations, drama, galore. That's Serie A for you in a nutshell. Uh, so, the red card was given. The red card was given because of Koulibaly's actions and Koulibaly himself claims that he was applauding the crowd for taking the referee out of and you know great that you're trying to make mark markets he got now a two game ban because the FA uh, Italian FA uh, interpreted as, as being towards the referee. Now monkey chance Angelotti said many times that uh, that three or four or four times they alerted the referee of the monkey chance and that it cannot continue, that play, a game should be halted. I mean, that is the rule in Italy that a game can be halted because of racial abuse. Uh, there is a protocol to it um, that, you know, there have, there have to be announcements made and, you know, uh, seemingly it was interpreted there was not enough time and so on. Anyway, uh, Angelotti said the next time they will just walk off uh, even if they would lose the game which probably would send another strong signal uh, uh, towards uh, the people in question that you know we cannot do it just like that uh, losing a game because of that I'm sorry also doesn't feel right but you know if someone is willing to uh, lose, lose a game uh, on higher grounds so be it uh, so that was happening uh, Announcements were made, but Monkey Chance continued. I honestly didn't hear the crowd because I'm watching the highlights kind of uh, to feel my noise. Uh, so I personally didn't hear it, but I believe the report. The irony is also not lost on me that a club called Internazionale is um, accused of racism. And Inter issued a statement that, you know, we are brothers of the world and this is what the founders of Internazionale is. Uh, Inter basically was founded after um, what is now Milan, uh, the original Milan team, they split. I uh, wanted to enter the Italian Championship in 1908 where uh, only Italian players were actually allowed. And Inter said this cannot happen because they had a bunch of Swiss players and the chairman of Milan and interestingly was English at the time. So that's kind of the contentious founding of Inter out of uh, Milan. There's a great video on the Rabona TV, I'll probably link it up here as a card uh, to that video because it really is um, uh, any, any, any interesting backstory to one of the greater derbies in Europe, not one of the heated ones, no. but you know, it's heated on my part. I, uh, the funny thing is that um, I think both teams are now associated, I mean uh, Milan was always associated with the working class of uh, Milan, whereas Inter was more the bourgeoisie, intelligentsia, uh, but I don't see this necessarily happening from um, the founding. This developed over time, so yeah, and it's in another way, I don't have those any of these roots really. Uh, I became a Milan fan because Milan was a great team, and then you know, if you're a fan of one team, you um, if you're a real fan, you pick up the rivals. Uh, I know I'm not very consistent, especially in American sports, with that, um, but that's where it comes from. 
uh, because of all that and all the abuse, um, the Italian FA ordered that Inter has to play behind closed doors for two games and that uh, Curva Nord, where the Inter fans uh, have to, uh, it has to be uh, closed for another game and there's even talk about it to close, it be closed down for the season. Uh, the Italian FA Premier President seemingly was so upset that the whole thing that he wanted to even call off the Serie A season, which uh, is a little bit of a strong uh, statement, to be honest. Uh, and yeah, probably such a punishment should set the precedence. And I would love if the story was done here, but no, it takes even a more mad turn. As I said about the rivalry between Inter and between the northern Italy and um, uh, southern Italy, and there was of course a fan clash, uh, seemingly ahead of the game, where a bus of Napoli supporters uh, was halted by Inter ultras who were allied, and the story becomes even crazy. They were allied with from Novara and Roger Zenis from France, which to me, uh, I don't know now Novara's colors, but Nice, red and black, allied with Inter, it does not make much sense to me. Uh, and it's even funny because I, because of the colors I was actually thinking of maybe getting a Nice kit because this year they really look nice. Funnily enough, this kills it for me uh, a little bit. Anyway, be it as, as, as it is, there needs to be more research done on my part, and I don't want to make uh, hasty uh, decisions. Anyway, uh, the bus was halted by Ultras, um, who was pelted with uh, stones and whatever, uh, you know, Boca River stuff. The Napoli supporters got out and there were fights with knives and so on. And then the Napoli fans got back in the bus, the bus left and hit a uh, seemingly a Novara supporter who had to be put on life support in a nearby hospital. Uh, funnily enough, there is a hospital right next to the San Siro, uh, actually quite a prestigious one as far as I heard. Uh, but he didn't make it, so we have one death from that encounter. It is absolute madness. It's absolute madness. So you have racial abuse, you have fights with knives and that, and you have a death on top of that. Um, I have to say that Inter fans, from what I remember, are not for the faint of heart. I remember being a uh, small motorcycle brought in the stands, put in flames and dropped onto supporters, on the away supporters below, which were also from southern Italy. I think this was an incident that happened in the early 2000s, seemingly. I, of course, there is when Inter fans uh, stopped the gently called quarter final between, in, uh, between Inter and Milan by just throwing flares at the goalkeeper. Uh, there is an aggressive element to Inter fans that I would not expect from uh, the club the way it comes. And all rivalry with Milan aside, I actually I have to I I strongly believe that this is not coming from the club itself. The, um, well, it's really not law, law, not law, not come from the club itself. I think that Inter is really doing the best. Of becoming a well-led club. I mean, uh, the fun stuff is you, it was so easy to hate on Inter uh, during, during Milan's glory years because they were just such a mess. They put so much money into uh, players, really great players most of the time, but just couldn't get the act together. And uh, yeah, some may say it down to bribery or whatever because Milan and Juve divided up the championship, but we also know that now in the Campchopoli scandal. And to me, it's, it's still scandalous that Inter got that one title. Uh, to their credit, um, either by Kate, both don't give this one to Inter. Because uh, don't tell me that Inter was not involved. Let's put it that way. Uh, it just seems preposterous to me. Uh, they got away with it. I think they saw an opportunity, bounced, and, um, and pounced on it. And good on them. I mean, uh, 
much as I hate it, if you got away with it, that's also part of detailing him, so um, tip of the head for that. So yeah, ri rivalry aside, I really think an Inter can sort this out. Uh, I don't want the Inter curve to be closed. I think this to me is the worst thing uh, to not have your fans there and uh, playing in front of closed doors. It's uh, also, also a kind of collective punishment that uh, does not seem to be fair. The police should, uh, there should be an in in investigation identify the individuals who are behind this and uh, take, take, take them away. And maybe shutting down the fan block may not be the worst thing, but you know, I honestly don't think that the, punish, the punishment does not really fit the crime. Uh, I think calling it off would, be, would, would have been the best thing. Maybe give the points to Napoli in that case. Also, I find the suspension for Koulibaly, you know, it was a yellow red, now he has two games. Also doesn't sit well with me. I honestly have to say so. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. It's a big mess, uh, but it made for a longer video and there's stuff to talk about, a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, I'm gonna be looking for that. I think this, from a Milan perspective, uh, this probably means that a lot of attention is taken away from Gattuso and Milan now. But yeah, it's sad that they're playing again. And I'm for the first time considering not watching. But you know, I'm a fan, I will watch. I need this dose of self-hatred. Anyway, let me know what you think about the situation, uh, about the Southern Western game as well. Um, subscribe to my channel if you uh, want to see more videos like this. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Also check out the playlists right around here, uh, which may feature other interesting things that might interest you. Talk to you soon. Bye.